and Kay Emery. And she's going to talk to us today about our viewers expecting a story, how takeaway titles and dark colors can guide our viewers or not. Going to be a very interesting conversation here. Anne is an internationally acclaimed speaker who equips organizations to get their data out of their dusty spreadsheets and into real world conversations. Each year, she delivers over 100 keynotes, workshops, and webinars with the aim of equipping organizations to visualize data more effectively. She has been invited to speak in 30 states and 10 countries. 4,800 people have en enrolled in her online training academy, and she has consulted over 200 organizations, including the United Nations, Centers for Disease Control, and Harvard University. After traveling full-time as a digital nomad, Anne now resides in Florida along with her husband and three children. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring Anne up on our virtual stage. Anne, welcome to the Dedicated Expo. You finally made it. Glad to see you here. <laughs> I'm here, hey, Kate. All right, um, go ahead and pull up my slides if you don't mind, Kate, and let's- Yeah, yeah, let's sure. Go ahead. Cool. Yep, I'll okay. let you take it away. I'll see you in 10 minutes. So today we're talking about our viewers expecting a story. But first, let me hear from you. So use the comment section, introduce yourself. Let me know two things. First up, let me know your title, your role, the typical intro stuff so we can get to know each other a little bit more. And second, let me know what does the term data storytelling mean to you? This is a tricky term. It means different things to different people. We're going to talk about this in a lot of detail today about the various definitions. So I want to hear what definition you're most familiar with, if any. Okay, so as Kate mentioned, I'm Anne Emery. I lead Depict Data Studio, and we provide a mix of data visualization training and consulting. I started Depict back in 2014. So over the past eight years, I've worked with a variety of organizations, mostly government agencies, universities, foundations, nonprofits, for-profits. But the one thing that these groups have in mind is... They are so tired of this. Of course they are, right? Nobody wants to write this. Nobody wants to read this. Everybody is on board these days with soaring beyond the dusty shelf report. The one that goes on and on and on with so much, so much. We have so much data these days and it's definitely challenging to dig through it and figure out the key takeaways. So nowadays what I do is help people move beyond this, the dusty report, the dusty presentation slides with too many bullet points or too many slides, the dusty dashboards with so many graphs but no key takeaway finding, and we produce the shorter report, the shorter presentation, the shorter dashboard that gets to the point really, really quickly. So how do you make that transition? How do you go from the dusty shelf report to the reports and slideshows and dashboards that actually make a difference? The very, the very unsexy, the very boring answer is we have to time out. We have to do some planning at the beginning of our projects. Now, if we had a full day workshop together, I would love to go through all eight of these planning considerations with you, but we only have 10 minutes. So I want to focus on the one that I think is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. I think with a little bit of upfront planning on this question, our viewers expecting a story that's going to have a massive impact on the quality of your data viz project. Okay, so I asked you a moment ago what the term data storytelling means to you. Let me glance at the comments, see if anybody has some ideas about data storytelling, this tricky term, because I can tell you it's not this. Let me add a big red X here. It is not, it is not fiction. It's not like you're reading your kid a bedtime story about poor old fox has lost his socks. You're just making things. It's not fiction, okay? Let me see what you said. Valerie says, um, what does data really mean and what do you want it to tell? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm nodding in agreement there. Um, Angela says, translating data for non-data centric users. Yep, nodding in agreement there. That's a great definition. Uh, let's see. George says, telling stories of data. Yes, yes, data storytelling is, is in fact telling stories of data. Let's get more specific, okay? I wanna show you the definition that I use in my work, and I hope this is useful for you too, to, to really know like on an operational day-to-day -day sense, what is data storytelling? Because some people love this term, probably you, probably people at the expo. There are a lot of talks today about data storytelling, but some people shy away from this term 
they're like, no, 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 I'm not doing data storytelling because I don't want to make things up. We're not, we're not making things up. I don't want to bias my audience. I don't want you to bias your audience either. Or they say, I don't want to, um, I don't want to fudge the numbers. I don't, I don't want you to do that either. Okay. So let's talk about what it, what it really means. We're going to look at three versions of a graph, the default version that we're never, ever, ever going to do no default settings. And then the traditional and the storytelling version, we're going to look at all of these side by side by side. So you can see how they're similar and how they're different. And then at the end, I'm going to ask you which one you think your audience needs. Not default, okay, but traditional or storytelling. So be thinking about this. Be thinking about how it applies to your work so you can comment later on and, and weigh in and let me know because each of us works in a little bit different settings. So we'll see how you apply this to your work. Okay, first up, the default graph. Now, I'm pretending that we surveyed people and we asked them, what's your favorite ice cream flavor, okay? We're never doing default settings Ever again, wave farewell to those. I'm software agnostic. I tend to use everyday software programs like Excel a lot. I don't care if you use Excel, Tableau, Power BI, this thing, this other thing. There's so many good products out there. There's so many good ones, but we always, always have to tweak the default settings a little bit. So at the bare minimum, here's what I need you to do. At the bare minimum, you're gonna take those default settings, enlarge the font size, enlarge the bars, remove the border. You might add labels sometimes if you think your audience needs a little bit more specificity. If you do add specific labels, then you're going to have to adjust the scale. The minimum and maximum tends to be enough if you have the specific labels already. You don't need to label this thing and this thing and this thing with an overly crowded scale. You're going to use brand colors. This is my brand blue. I also have a brand green and a brand purple. You're gonna use your brand colors, not mine, of course. You're also gonna use brand fonts. That's it. That's the traditional graph. There's a topical title. The topic of the graph is up there and it's all one color. None of the colors stand out. It's up to the viewers to read between the lines or between the bars in this case and figure out the so what for themselves. Storytelling, just one little step further, one little step, okay? You take that graph you already have. You already spent 60 seconds cleaning up the default settings. And then you might sort it greatest to least or least to greatest. Whatever you want to grab people's attention should get prominence and be listed first. You're gonna gray everything out this is the key part. And then you highlight one takeaway finding at a time with a darker color. You rewrite the title and put the takeaway finding in the title. And for bonus points, you bold a few keywords to make it even more skimmable. To recap, big red X on the default settings. Never, ever, ever again. Goodbye defaults. Please don't use these. Spend about 60 seconds rolling up your sleeves, making some quick edits. You can go the traditional path or you can go the storytelling path. They're both correct. They're correct in different scenarios, which is what I want you to be thinking about and I'll ask you about in a couple minutes. Traditional graphs have a topical title. None of the colors stand out. Storytelling graphs have a takeaway title and an intentional dark light contrast. Let's look at one more example. I'm gonna pick on line graph default settings for a minute. We'll pretend that we're looking at projects and how they did after a four-year project, okay? Big red X on the default settings. At a bare minimum, you're gonna take that graph, enlarge the fonts, adjust the scale, remove the border, add brand colors, yours, not mine, add brand fonts, and this is a line chart specific edit. You're gonna remove the legend, no more separate legends. The best practice is called direct labeling. You put the labels directly beside the data. Direct labels have three key advantages. They are faster to read. No more eyes zigzagging back and forth and back and forth. They're better for people who are colorblind. Even if people can't tell the colors apart, they can still read the graph accurately. And they're better for grayscale printing. Now, I don't know how often people are printing things 
sometimes, once in a while. And when we are printing, we're probably not using colored ink just because it's so expensive. So I always want you to plan for some people maybe printing things in grayscale. That's where direct labels save the day. Look, before, separate legend. Nope, we don't do that. After, the labels directly beside the data. That's the traditional edit. That's the bare minimum edit. Storytelling goes like this. You take the graph you already have. You gray it out. You highlight one thing at a time. You rewrite the title and put the takeaway message in the title. Bonus points for bolding a few keywords to make it even more skimmable. I bet you have these takeaway titles. I bet you do, but they're hiding. In a report, they're probably hiding in the paragraph up here. You probably have that key phrase already. You're just doing a copy paste. Just take that key phrase, repeat it in the graph title so that even as somebody is skimming through or they're scrolling through, even if they don't read all those dense paragraphs, even if they just look at the graph, they still leave with a sense of what the graph is actually talking about. You could highlight the success story, as I've done here. You could also highlight fictional project C that's not doing so well. You could use a good color. Blues and greens in Western cultures are good colors, thumbs up colors. Or uh, once in a while, once in a while, very sparingly, I do this. The Debbie Downer red, reds and oranges in Western cultures are like, whoa, time out, ah, thumbs down. I don't do this very often though. I just wanna show you the difference because colors have personalities and tones. So use them very carefully and intentionally. You can do this with any graph type. This applies to bars, to lines, to scatter plots, to maps. It applies to all the chart types. Never use the default settings. You're either going the traditional path with the topical title and none of the colors standing out or the storytelling path with the takeaway finding and the intentional dark light contrast. Okay, so now I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know which audiences prefer traditional graphs, which audiences that you work with. When do you think that that's the best bet? That's gonna work sometimes. That's absolutely the right answer sometimes. And also let me know which audiences prefer storytelling graphs. When do you think that takeaway title and the dark light contrast is gonna be really helpful? These have different strengths. You're gonna have to apply them in different scenarios. All right, while you're typing, Kate, let me know if there are any questions. Hello, hello, and thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Yes, we have a lot of questions. First of all, really love the transition. Then don't use the default, okay? I will just repeat it. I know you've said it several times. Guys, don't use the default. George even asks, you know, this makes you wonder why the default settings aren't better. I feel like we can all say, okay, this looks great. Oh, this does not look great. Um, why aren't the default settings better? What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. We have so many software companies attending today. I don't want to bash anybody. I have a love-hate relationship with all the software programs. I don't know. Someday, someday, right? Like if you're from a software program watching, yeah, just 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 edit it. You'll save us all so much time, right? But someday I can dream. Yes, I was looking for a, a comment, but we have so many that it kind of flew by. Somebody said that they actually have your data to dashboard with Excel course open in another tab that they're enjoying right now at the Dedicated Academy. So woohoo, that's that's awesome. I'm gonna take a few more questions here. Let's see. Uh, oh, David, that was David who said that. He he says that from experience, you can get all these tips in her data to dashboard with Excel course. Awesome. Uh, Nicole says this is golden. Yeah, absolutely. And Drupad is definitely reading my mind here. You know, can't believe how much of a difference a small change can make. A lot of times we don't even know what those small changes are when we see the differences, but we immediately know that it just simply looks better. Um, all right, let's take this question from George. He's asking if you have a preference between light mode and dark mode for data visualizations. I wonder if he means the background color, like the background. I think so, I think so. Yeah, there, um, there's a logic to this. I learned it when I took some formal presentations training. Yeah. You wanna match the screen color to the room. Okay. So I usually present in rooms with the lights on, like, I don't know, you can see my lights are on today, right? And most, when I, 
someday when we go back to in-person training, yeah. I'm usually speaking with the lights on. So you want the white screen to match like the white in the room. If I were doing like, if I was a professor on stage in a dark auditorium, I would yeah. probably use a dark slide background to kind of match the auditorium. So there's, I don't know. I usually use white backgrounds though. Yeah, sometimes that's that's cleaner. Um, let me just see. Alexandra had a, a comment here. I always love your presentations. You have been my department's go-to reference in visualization since we saw your keynote at the CQ, is it CQI Illinois conference? Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> Not familiar with that one. And uh, I'll take one last comment here from Eric uh, in response to your question earlier. He says he tends to use more traditional style when sharing something that will be followed by a more general discussion because conclusion hasn't been drawn yet. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in those draft settings, you're sharing some draft data visits, preliminary findings, and you want the audience to come to the conclusion themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I was skimming a lot of the comments too. I, I'm just agreeing with a lot of them. Yeah. So traditional graphs, the topical title and none of the colors stand out. That's typically going to be your technical audience, people who love data. They love looking at graphs. They don't mind spreadsheets. They're like, oh, I'm so at home in spreadsheets. Technical audiences don't mind reading graphs. They're not going to mind spending a little bit of time reading your traditional graph. Internal audiences who are already familiar with the data, they already know how to read the graph because they've seen that topic over and over. Um, and then people with a lot of time on their hands, they don't mind reading graphs because they've got time. The other side storytelling is going to be the opposite. So your non-technical audiences, your external audiences who don't work within your agency or within the same project, you know, they're a little bit outside, not familiar with it, or anybody who's busy, which is going to be pretty much everybody in a leadership position these days, because they just have so much going on. They don't have the luxury of time. So okay. if you just put the takeaway finding right on top of the graph for them and just highlight one key finding with a darker color, they're going to be so grateful. Yes. Tell me what you want to tell me, right? That's it. End of story. Awesome. Well, and we do have several questions that keep coming in. If you've got the time to jump into LinkedIn chat and answer those directly, that would be great. Um, but thank you so much again for your time here. All right. Thank you, Kate.